very different from conventional financial planning tools, even the web-based, almost entire functionality for a user. 90% of what he needs to do is on this one single screen through this different panels and tabs. First thing I want to confirm with Danny, I don't know what kind of a screen size you are on at this time. Is the font too small for you? Shall I increase it a little more? Uh, no, it's fine. Great. So, so what we have on the screen, I said, is uh, there are different panels. We have our, all the clients, which we call as households so here, where you can select a household that you want to work on, and rest of the panels kind of are linked to that. So when you move to Jones family, this panel for household members, plans, and everything else changes. I will go back to Brady, so the Brady changes, and we've got a different set of parameters. Highly responsive application works instantly one. Second thing is uh, that all the various panels that we have here are organized as mini worksheets. So you can uh, enter rows here by clicking a plus button. If you want to edit a row, you select that row and press the pencil icon to change the social security for Lisa Brady. Or you can delete a row by pressing uh, the minus uh, icon. And, and you can keep on like incoming cash flows like pension, rent. You can keep on adding things here, more and more cash flows that you have of different type in this panel. And we kept it closer to a worksheet because that is one tool that most advisors are very, very comfortable with. So that's one. The second thing we wanted to, as I was saying earlier, keep all the functionality reach, reachable within a single to maximum of three clicks. So most of the functionality, you can create a plan, you can create a lot of things, most like within one and generally two clicks. Uh, sometimes you need to go up to three clicks if you're going to capital market assumptions and changing a few things. But otherwise, within one or two clicks, you can get what you want done. The layout is flexible uh, where you can close panels uh, when you don't need them and open them and even fold the left side uh, completely if you're working just on the plan. So that's just a, a background about uh, the user interface and with that I will jump into the actual case study that I'll use for the demonstration. In the case study that I'm going to use, and this is also on our website, uh, and he is uh, the Brady family. And in this case study, they are a 66-year-old couple, and they are struggling with the same set of decisions that every retiree typically comes in. We are retiring now. Shall we take Social Security now? Shall we defer it? And shall we buy some annuities and what type? So what we will demonstrate in this case study are actually two different, two, three different plans. The first one, what we call as a base plan, is basically, you know what, take your Social Security now, just rely on a systematic withdrawal portfolio. Then we run different type of, uh, two different plans where we change the strategy and that is demonstrated in this exhibit where you're deferring the Social Security claim up to 70 years of age, and we're going to use a text-based ladder to lock in the cash flow exactly the same as Social Security would have given, if not uh, uh, so what the Social Security would begin at 70, same cash flow locked from the U.S. government, inflation adjusted, so this is the floor that gets created, one part of the floor, add some single premium immediate annuity, buy a little bit of it, which with pension gives us higher floor, and even look at buying a variable annuity with some guaranteed minimum income benefit, which kicks in after 10 years, which gives us higher floor as we age and our medical expenses uh, for Brady's become higher with higher out-of-pocket expenses as they get older beyond their mid-70s. So with that kind of strategy will run different plans. That is what I will uh, demonstrate in the case. Any questions at this point, Andy, uh, before I go ahead and start running this case uh, uh, in the tool? Um, <clears throat> where is the rest of the portfolio? You've got bonds, you've got SPIAs. Where, 
is the participation in the stock market? Yeah, so that's a systematic withdrawal portfolio. So this is income being shown over time. So systematic withdrawal portfolio gets invested in a typical model allocation of stock and bond funds in any kind of uh, typical conventional investment portfolio. So that's called a systematic withdrawal portfolio. And is this graphic, does this represent asset allocation or or income source, alloc it's total income it's representing? Yes, it's an okay. income source over time. Yes, okay. Great, and you will see this uh, more, uh, the actual cash flow source, more accurate graph uh, when we run the plan in the report and I'll show you that uh, later on. So now coming back to the case, I've had uh, most of the data set up to save some time where I've created the Peter and Lisa Brady as household members and the fact that if they claim their social security benefit now, they will get at 66, actually now is when they retire in the year 2014, January, they will get 2000 and $2,500 respectively. And the fact that these are based on their own earnings and there's a significance of that, I'll show you in a little while. But if it was spousal earning, as you know that if you defer the claim age, income discovery models the rules for adjusting the benefit amount up based on deferrals. And those rules and the, uh, the increments are different if it is based on your own earnings or it is spousal earnings. And of course, if it's spousal, you can't defer beyond your full retirement age. So all those rules come into play. That is why we also configure whether this benefit is based on own and spousal earnings. Then we have a small pension for them, which is a lifetime cash flow. It could have been used to model any type of limited cash flow, suppose they sell a home and they get home equity five years down the line, so you will configure that as 2019, certain cash flow coming in only one for one year, one year, and if at all they have any type of inflation adjustment, like if pension has a COLA, and that could have been modeled here as well. Then they have about $800,000 in total assets across all their accounts, and this is what you realize that we're trying to make uh, the app application very simple and fast to use. So we have two modes of the app. We are currently working in the mode where taxes are ignored. And there is a mode which I will show later where we can move to taxes. And if you want to run a simple analysis for prospecting or having the first meeting with the client to really find out a strategy to use for Social Security and annuities, we do not have to get into the complexity of taxes. So that's why you have a much simpler user interface. We don't need to go into, you know, where is this $800,000 between your IRA, Roth, and taxable account. We just say, here's the total money you have. And based upon some average 10, 15% uh, effective tax rate, we'll put some pre-tax income that we should get. Let's run our first analysis and figure out what is right for you and then we go into the details. And for Brady's, we will have, we have configured, uh, uh, and I'm gonna edit this so you can see this, we have configured the 13 years of planning horizon. What you can also see is that for every field, um, if they have a question, they can put their mouse over it, which has a lot more information about the field. And if they still have questions, we tell them to refer to one of the knowledge base articles, and I will show you an article for uh, especially determining what should be the planning horizon. So we have a knowledge base article uh, in our uh, called income parameters and actually I have it already open here so I'm going to show it to you. Uh, this is our knowledge base where we have a product guide and this is the income parameters article and why I wanted to show you that is that we show them the lifespan table based on social security period life table as to a 65 year old what's their 90th percentile lifespan. So they can look at this and decide what do they want to use. We are using 36, 30 years because we want to plan for Lisa to live up to her 90th percentile lifespan, which is going to be 96 years of age. And this is a, a searchable knowledge base where uh, they can you can search through any articles besides the product guide 
There is also a lot of articles on strategies which we are enriching uh, on what works, what doesn't. And obviously there's a whole uh, uh, ticketing system where they can submit requests and it's ticketed, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so all that capability and support behind the product is there. Now, last thing is the cap to market assumptions. And what I uh, did not even show you till now, Andy, is that there is another way, a lot, a lot more efficient way to edit the data, which is you just double click a row and this opens up like a worksheet where you can just tab through the fields, tab back and forth like as if you're in Excel, and once you're done, you simply press enter. I could have used different set of assumptions which can all be configured by the advisor on their own. We give them low return, moderate inflation, uh, all the way to medium return and high inflation scenarios, and even historical scenario sets, which are basically historical sequence of data on the Ibitson, uh, from Ibitson classic yearbook. So I'm going to leave this at moderate inflation and just press enter and that saves the data. Now the second thing about Brady's, and this is true with most households, is even though as they get older their medical expenses, etc., will go a little bit higher, but a lot of their discretionary spending that they will do in the next first 10 to 15 years of retirement will slow down and that's going to disappear. So after they, we use this income phases capability to change their income, retirement income, total need over time, decreasing it by about 10% once they cross, uh, once they get into their 80s. So that is the first basic data we have and then we are all set now to at least run our first plan which is going to not have any uh, any type of annuity or a bond ladder and based upon the risk profile for Brady's we will put them in a conservative inflation protected portfolio and this is what I was saying while the social security uh, the benefits are configured with age etc is that while we are running the plan we can change the strategy to of the social security claim I could make it as I will see later make it 70 years of age but currently I'll keep the same. Do not use any ladder, any type of annuity, and let's see how this plan does. Now one thing Eddie you would have noticed is we got a response pretty fast within a second or so. And we are running a full Monte Carlo simulation with thousand different scenario paths, but our background, especially my, our team's background from Wall Street uh, and global risk technology and all of that technology to do enterprise risk systems, what my team has learned over the last, uh, over our decade experience in Wall Street is how to really run simulation efficiently. And that comes in handy as I'll show you later that we can do optimization through some strategies even while simulating them through thousand different scenario paths of 30 odd years. But now coming back from technology to the actual functionality is now we see how this strategy would have done and the strategy is to claim Social Security at 66, use a conservative inflation protected portfolio in a systematic withdrawal manner, and we want to have $100,000 of income, but what is the risk for that? And one thing to notice here, Andy, is you do not see the words probability of success. And there are strong reasons on our side why the word probability doesn't appear, why the word success doesn't appear. And that is in one of our uh, article on our, in our knowledge base, which is linked. But let me explain you briefly. We believe, uh, and this is uh, not really us, we are just implementing the behavioral finance research, which in, in a nutshell says that uh, the, when we talk about the word probability, and when we present it as a probability as a percentage, versus when you present the same data as a frequency, which is 1,000 retirees, how many out of that? Mathematically, they are same, but psychologically, they are very, very different. And the key difference is probability of success is some future thing that can happen, may not happen, and when you think of probability, you may think of cards, or wheel, you may think of various different associative memory, but 
when we are talking about frequency, and let's see how we are talking about it. We are saying what out of 1,000 retirees, 660 of them got full income over the plan, and 340 of them got partial income for some, of the, some years in the plan. Now, that means that when, when the data is presented like this, what behavioral finance research tells us is that people now start visualizing a room full of 1,000 people, and then they segregate the retirees. They will segregate them into one group of 660 who got full income and 340 in another corner that got partial income. The way they interpret this data is very different the way based on the presentation, and that is the way we want them to interpret. They should understand what it means that there is a possibility now they can belong to that group of 340, and these are people, real people, that can that the real situation that can happen to them. And now secondly, why the word success doesn't exist is you got partial income, it may not be a success or a failure depending upon the floor that you have built using annuity, social security, et cetera, you may still get certain, like in this case, we present to them an unfortunate retiree, one of those retirees who has partial income, really looking at the tail side, now going back to the math side of it, if you want to know, looking at the 98th percentile, like the guy who really took the brunt of the market and inflation, what was his situation? He received 17 years of full income out of a 30-year plan that we did, with a 30-year plan, and for the remaining 30 years, 13 years, he had 65% of the income that he wanted, not terribly bad, but not too good either, and we'll improve that. But that gives him a flavor, you know what, fine, 660 of my peers will get full income, 340 of them get partial income. Even the most unfortunate retiree in that set will at least have 65% income to live on after, uh, 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 in the last 13 years when the portfolio exhausts. So that's the presentation. We also present a secondary reward, the average legacy that Brady's will be able to leave behind of $188,000. Now comes the question, and uh, how can so we improve the unfortunate, I'm sorry, Manish, the, the, the unfortunate retiree is actually the most unfortunate retiree in the group, correct? Yes. Oh, okay, okay, just wanted to make sure I understood that, thanks. And what we, although we verbally say it as most, we do not mention that as, as most in that purely from a compliance perspective and FINRA review, right? We can't really say, you know what, this is the worst case that you can have because we never know in future. But verbally, the advisor would at least communicate that this is one of what we believe the worst situation that can happen. Now, the second thing, and I use this button to run one of the plans. You can run a plan using the plus icon here. It's the same thing. Just offer two icons to make it convenient to do the action that you want to do. So we're going to run a smart plan now, one of our smart plans. We say that we will defer the claim to 70 years of age. And I'm going to even defer Lisa's claim to 70 years of age. We'll use a bond ladder to fill in for Social Security, and I'll show you that how we can figure it in a little while. We're going to buy an immediate annuity with a 3% COLA and move about 10% of the assets there. And we'll buy a variable annuity with a GMIB benefit. And how we can figure it, I'll show you in a little while. We move 10% of the assets into that. And let's see how that strategy does. And to help you compare it better, uh, like as you're working, you may decide, what I just want to look at a plan. I close the income strategy options panel for now. So let's look at what we did. By just doing a smarter income plan, see the impact that we have had on the risk. We've got, instead of 660 retirees, we almost have 909 retirees now getting full income over the plan. And only 91 of those 1,000 retirees have, already have partial income. And even the most unfortunate retiree situation got improved quite a bit. We've got 21 years of full income in that situation, and for the remain, which is another four years of full income. But after that, the floor that we have built with our annuities 
is going to give almost 94, 93% of the income that they wanted. So it's only 7% shortfall, which is not too bad for a most unfortunate situation. So it's pretty good. And all we had to do was just take Social Security later and use our three strategies of a bond ladder and two different type of annuities. And while we reduce the risk, we even bumped up the legacy that they can leave behind. Now conventionally, as you know, right, as, and this is one of the things that I wrote in my GFP paper also is, it is not necessary that buying annuity will lead to lesser legacy. I mean, if you die in the next five, seven years, of course you put some money away if you don't have a certain period uh, in that. But, but looking at your whole, if you're planning for 20, 25, 30 years, the annuities, since they will keep on giving you the cash flow, they can even release your investment portfolio. Like in this case, you're not dependent upon systematic withdrawal portfolio a lot. Once the VHMIB kicks in and other annuities are already there, you can let your investment portfolio grow and you can pass on more. And that's also another article I wrote on advisor perspectives, uh, which is also linked from our uh, as to why it is uh, highly recommended uh, that people do not self-insure at least beyond 85. So this is uh, one of the articles that I wrote before last year's SPA retreat uh, when I was talking there. I'd even recommend you to read this uh, offline if you wanted to. So you can increase legacy. It's, it's not necessary, and that's the point that I made in, in that article. Why is that the case? Now. Since we've got so little risk and we've got 90%, and the another thing is, and this is why we eliminated probability of success, is when you've got 90% of your income already covered in the last phase of retirement, you don't really that much care even that much of if you get full or partial income. You could even withdraw more. So he may say, you know what, I want to have more income than I, uh, I've wanted. So let's say if you make our income is $103,000, we keep the same strategy, and let's see how that does. And we'll get the results. So we see, you know what, using this strategy, we increased, uh, and we, although our uh, number of retirees getting full income reduced somewhere close to what we had before, but we still have 82% of the coverage that we need, even in the most unfortunate situation. And he, the retiree may be comfortable with that. But I want to take more, and if uh, things do not turn out bad, at least I've covered myself for what I want in the last phase of my retirement. And now once we have these plans on the table, now the, uh, of course, you can look at the cash flows, et cetera, on screen, which I, I'll show you here, and, and I want to move on to the report. You can look at a lot of details about the plan, including nominal cash flows or real, which is basically real means in today's dollars terms, or you can look at them with nominal, with inflation, and also bond ladder composition, so it shows how we're getting the $100,000 we want. Initially, we get our bond ladder to give us close to $72,000. And once Social Security kicks in, that gives us seventy-two. We got a small pension, a small uh, immediate annuity, and available annuity with GMIB kicking here. And this is going to be in the report, too, in cash flow in a chart form. The client can see the benefit of via GMIB that your contract would have your portfolio would have exhausted in the VA by the time you're 84, but you'll still collect your benefit because you paid this rider fee of 1000 bucks for a period of uh, 15 years. So you paid this to guarantee that you keep on getting this income if the portfolio doesn't perform well. And we show them the bond ladder composition, saying here are the tips you would need to buy, here are the Q sets their maturity date, coupon, et cetera, and you buy 56, 59, 62 of these, put up this much money, and you're good to go. And you've locked in $72,000 of uh, uh, cash flow for three years, which could have been anything, could have been a five, seven year, any period you define. And also, look at the same thing in nominal terms, how it is uh, Social Security increases nominally with inflation, et cetera. Now, Coming out of here, now we want to take this result to the client. We will arrange the plans in the order that we want to present. We want to present it to them. And this is our recommended plan to him. And if it is, we simply take it and click and drag it to the top. 
And this is our uh, second plan that we want to show them. And this is our base plan on which we're showing how we are improving the performance for your plan and uh, how we are able to, through better income strategies, get you not only the income that you want at completely no risk and even get you more at acceptable level of risk with the floor that is being built, et cetera, et cetera. So the uh, so advisor is now ready to have the conversation and present to him. Now this all we looked at was pretty much an advisor view. Now we get to go to a client view where uh, he's got a report that he can present which has uh, an executive summary, an analysis overview chapter, all the assumptions, comparison of the plan in a detailed way. But let me begin with the executive summary which shows the same data that we had in the plans panel in graphical format compared side to side how retirees with full income they are between 660 to all the way to uh, 900 out of 1,000 years of full income for the un most unfortunate retiree case and income in the short fall years going all the way to 80% if you take higher income or even 90% if you take don't. And then showing your income versus legacy trade-off, how you take more income, your legacy reduces a little bit and by a smarter plan, your legacy is even higher even though you use some annuities. So in this case, show the portfolio allocation between the base plan, nothing was used but a systematic withdrawal portfolio. In the other cases, we move some amount of money into a variable annuity, an immediate income annuity, and a bond ladder. And summarizing what kind of social security claim strategy and uh, variable annuity model and systematic withdrawal model that we used. So this Two pages up front are the executive summary to have the conversation with the client and then of course follows are the charts, cash flow charts, which are source of cash flow in nominal terms, how you get the $100,000 uh, inflation adjusted over time. You take bond ladder to give you the cash flow for three years, social security kicks in at 70, pension, immediate annuity, the VA GMIB and then you're dependent less and less on your systematic withdrawal portfolio. Same thing in real terms, because you can't really see with inflation uh, what the money is worth, so you see what is it worth in today's dollars uh, in cash flow. And of course, there's an analysis overview which shows them what type of strategies are being used, are some pictures, some explanation, what is a bond ladder, how we are using bonds held to maturity, to give you the cash flow from the coupon and the principal maturing, mix of that, and our system creates the number of bonds so you can get a level cash flow that you need. What these metrics are, the shortfall, reward, what uh, years of income for unfortunate retiree, everything is explained, all the assumptions that we used in the plan, all the annuity codes which we did not get into, uh, uh, what the annuity is, what is the payout, the inflation adjustment COLA, the GMIB, uh, what kind of return it has during the 10-year growth phase, and a guaranteed income base two times, the fees on the annuity, and payout once they are at 76 years of age. So all that is here, and ultimately the income analysis chapter, which shows all the numbers that we had in the executive summary uh, with all the strategies, uh, the bond ladder composition, of what bonds are being bought, the model allocation being used for the systematic withdrawal portfolio, and also uh, the one more useful thing we show is in the variable annuity, the guaranteed benefit is going to vary depending upon market returns. So we show if you get below market returns, you get $4,700 in the last year of your plan in today's dollar terms, and that could be worth $2,000 more if you get above average return. So we know that variation that exists in the variable annuity guaranteed benefit, you can see that whole variation. And of course, uh, in the uh, what's the model allocation being held in the variable annuity, which can be different from the one that you hold in your own portfolio. And the cash flow table that we saw on there, these, uh, a lot of times they really want to show the numbers of how the money is coming. And the second plan, third plan, like that, the whole thing. So with that, I'll just take a checkpoint 
and uh, let you ask some questions and then I will go back to the tool to show you some additional capabilities. The way that you identified the, uh, the bond ladder, the QSIPs, do you do anything similar to that with the annuity products? Uh, now, with the annuity products, what we do is uh, we do use it, the advisor configures the annuity on his own, and to get, so first is the configuration is what type of inflation adjustment you want. Is this immediate or is it a deferred income annuity? In that case, the start year will be in future. The next question is the quotes. Now, there are two options. We have integration with income solutions where we can pull in a live quote right now. And I can run it through and talk about it. So we'll get a joint life annuity quote with 75% survivor benefit. And we say, what? Well, go get the quote. Now, what is happening is we're going to income solutions. Income solutions is going to multiple insurance from behind the scene. And within about five seconds, we get the best quote that is available as on today. And you saw it increased by about $6 from my last quote. So this is one way. But if they have their own quote, that the annuity that they want to use based on their carrier, they can trigger the quote on their own, the payout on their own. So and there are how many? Options. And what are the different types of annuities that, where the, the quote will be built in and integrated with Income Solutions uh, app? Income Solutions supports primarily single premium immediate annuities with different inflation adjustments. COLA, even CPI, uh, urban in, uh, uh, inflation index, the government CPI, so all those in income solutions support. They do not support deferred income annuities today. So those quotes cannot be obtained uh, till the income solution starts supporting them on their platform, and then we will bring it in. Um, and how about variables? In variable, in the variable annuity, what happens is we support both GLWB, where you do not have any guaranteed growth rate on the benefit or slash income base, and GMIB, where you have that guaranteed growth compounded every year and something at the end of the growth phase. We support both. And again here, the advisor, since in the, uh, usually the payout rate is pretty standard, like 45 5.5% 5 .5 at ages, so they put in that and the fee structure varies across. So they just configure the, the annuity with the component of whether it is 5 or 4 percent. They configure it on their own based on the product that they have access to. How about for advisors that are not securities licensed? What would they do? They, they, they may want to be able to include some um, uh, securities type annuities, but they don't have the ability to sell them themselves. Uh, do you have people like that using your product? Uh, no, and that would be, I would believe, mostly would be conventional insurance agents, right, who typically don't have a security license. They do only an insurance product. No, I'm talking about fiduciaries, right. financial advisors who are uh, not securities, li securities licensed. They're registered investment advisors, fee only. Oh, uh, typical RIs. So with RIs, what happens is most of the RIs on our platform today and actually the, are all using contributions to buy the SPS. And, uh, uh, and uh, so they pretty much, the, the SPS transaction is handled completely through there. The variable uh, annuities, et cetera, I think they go in through their conventional, uh, uh, whoever is their uh, broker and custodian, whether Schwab, Fidelity, or TV, or Pershing. So they go through that uh, channel to secure, uh, to to make the purchase of their variable annuities. They may not be taking a commission on it, uh, especially the NAPA guys on those products. But they actually, the reason most of them go to income solutions is uh, that's their lowest cost option of buying some annuities. And some of the advisors even, I have uh, an advisor based in Arizona who actually gets his clients to buy uh, directly in Vanguard where Income Solutions uh, platform is available. So his clients go directly buy in there, and he tells them what to do and where to buy. How many advisors are using this and now? And he's an RIA, too. How many advisors are using this? I've got close to, I've got close to 450 plus now at this time. 
and what happened, Andy, was uh, uh, Robert Powell wrote about us in Market Watch, and that brought us a lot of uh, retail traffic. There are many individual investors who signed up, and I exclude those numbers currently. They just sign up. We tell them it's not available to them, but they just sign up. So, but 450 plus advisors, and we are uh, hopefully by the end of this month, we would have one of our first uh, institutional uh, uh, broker dealer firm making it available in their branches. We are in the contract stage, negotiating the contract document that I just sent back to them for feedback. So that would be our first institutional client. And plus, uh, I've got a couple more things going on where we will probably do something and make it available to a lot of independent BDs through a mass deal that is in progress too. Who do you um, see as your biggest competitor in this space? In the pure retirement income planning space, uh, there are no tools who are directly uh, comparable, right? Wealth 2K is, you know, is time segmentation. I'll show your time segmentation example later. We support that, but it's completely different. Like we do Monte Carlo simulation risk. They're only about some constant. And so Wealth 2K is completely different. Looking at retirement income in a very, very different way, not even getting into annuities, social security strategies, the best Com the best comparison uh, functionality comes in from a conventional financial planning tool, but they are weak in this space. That's the reason why I started the firm, because they were not tackling the retirement income problem appropriately, whether it is Money Guide Pro, Navier Plan, Money Tree. I mean, the conventional financial planning tools used in the independent space, they are there, but nowhere near the functionality that is needed for retirement income with different type of products. And I didn't even get into yet into taxes, which I'll show, or functionality where you can structure some future purchase of immediate annuities. You may not buy anything right now. You may buy $50,000 every two years for the next seven years or 10 years. You can even model that strategy. But I, 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 to sake of simplicity, I didn't get there and, or one other. So nobody is anywhere close to the, so that's the reason why we have at every presentation that we make, people are just awed and we are moving forward with all our institutional leaves and they have not seen anything like this. The, um, even people who have, I mean I'm talking to even wirehouses, Money Guide Pro, and they have both, but they are amazed at what we can do. The, uh, when you say that the conventional plan, financial planning tools are providing nowhere near the detail needed to do retirement income planning. Uh, where are they failing? Where do they miss the mark? So many aspects. Right? Let's first start with support for annuities, whether immediate or variable uh, annuities, right? I mean, fixed or variable. The support for that is ranging from nil, doesn't exist in some tools, to bare minimum. That's the first part. The second is uh, even besides the news, if you look, move into bond ladder, so that's the second part where they don't offer that capability at all. Social security claim change, right? So if you look here, right, when I move the social security from 66 to 70, I didn't have to know the number. We calculated that social security claim. So supporting anything that is needed and supporting social security claim as inherent part of our strategy, that's one. and what I didn't go into was uh, in uh, in taxes, and of course you can change, the, you can run the same plan with different capital market assumptions, or another capability that I haven't shown you is, and let me show you that now, which will also show why uh, they are not providing it. Retirement income needs a lot of optimization. So rather than just doing these strategies one by one, we offer this optimize button, which I just clicked here, and we say, you can say what, I want to look at these four portfolios for this client, look at these two options for the bound ladder, and for the immediate COLA annuities, look at three different options that I've configured for purchase, three different options for available annuity, and just go look at it and tell me which one is going to work out for the client, and we can come back and quickly find an answer. Here is a plan that can give you highest confidence, the plan which will have least shortfall. So it's about optimizing the income that they need so they can even save time and see what works and different type of product and of course 
taxes is another key thing which I'll even talk about. But I'll just go there, which you will see some features. They have nowhere near the feature that we're talking about, especially when you come to taxes. You've got the concept of a withdrawal order, so you can change the withdrawal order in the account. You can have different model portfolio in each account, like doing time segmentation like a wealth 2 k construct, but doing it under a Monte Carlo simulation-based analysis. You can split these accounts. You can decide to, I suppose I'm analyzing the same Peter Brady's case. Now I know where $800,000 is. I can choose where I build my ladder, what accounts I'm going to buy my ladder in, what account I'm going to buy my annuity in, immediate and variable annuity purchase. So it's about getting to the guts of building a plan that you're actually going to run trades on and execute, analyzing that plan versus doing a pie in the sky high level financial plan. That is a key difference. And this came out from one of the wirehouse guys who said that this is about building an implementation plan for a time and income, not a high level financial plan. Now, and uh, talk to me about the cost of your product. So cost is, uh, we want to be, it's very low. We want to be a dominant platform for income. We just don't want anybody else to exist in that space, and we're going to, that's our intention. So what we're doing for our cost is we're making it very low for adoption. So we offer, you can start with the base version of the product at $29 a month. Uh, if you sign up for the annual, or $49 if you keep on paying monthly, which gives you access to all the features which a registered rep would need, typically. All the annuities, variables, peers, bond ladder, everything, and the only thing that you get in a premium version, which is $99 a month or $79 if you do an annual subscription, is the optimizer button that you saw and all the tax-sensitive analysis and including creating your own capital market assumption, your own asset class. So I have a lot of sophisticated firms that use their own capital market assumptions coming from dimensional fund advisor, a lot of different places, or future annuities. So this is for mostly for RIAs and many CPA-based advisors. I mean, PF, uh, I have a lot of customers who are CPAs and PFS, and they really, most of them take the premium version, and a typical registered rep takes the base version at $39 a month. So and wait, so, are, so you have yeah. a, a $29 a month, $39 a month, and $79 a month plan? Yes, 39 and 79 So 39 is base. And premium is uh, almost double of that at seventy-nine dollars a month. <coughs> and um, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, where you talk about the uh, segmented time segmented, is yes. that so? Uh, tell me about that feature. So that is which comes in a, uh, the, the second case study on Smith, and I'll uh, show you that. Let me show you actually uh, uh, what we are trying to do in that report in that case. So this is the case that I'll run. So in this case, now we're going to primarily deal with time segmentation where we've got Robert Smith, a single guy who's got taxable Roth and IRA money. First thing you ought to figure out is, of course, which order you're going to withdraw in. And you can put Roth earlier. You will always have RMDs from IRA. Or you can decide to, this is again income versus time, you can decide to time segment it. And what you're going to do is you're going to slice your account taxable and IRA into two. So we have the first slice in conservative, then second slice in moderate, then IRA first slice in moderate, moderate aggressive and aggressive. And that is what you can do in the tool and uh, in here and to kind of save your time running. Right now this first case is without it and then I can split here and I can add a second taxable account where I'll, I'll move uh, some of the money saying if you have uh, uh, $250,000 in this, like that we split, and then we can reorder these accounts based on the withdrawal order that you want. If you want Roth before we move it up, you can change the model allocation, as you saw. So, yeah, so this is multi-period portfolios. Yes, multi-period. And multi-period yeah, multi income streams. Yes. Right. Uh, and so each period having its own risk and return characteristics. 
Precisely. Yeah. Interesting. And that can give you those strategies, as you can see here, and I'll show you in the executive summary of the support, which is on our website, is it can give you a lot more income. And you, whatever income you wanted, uh, you can actually, in this case, we're getting $8,000 more income for this gentleman. Here you can see by doing a smart plan, which the same risk, we just do different portfolio allocation for him, and over time, multiplied it, and we have pretty much the same, uh, same risk and uh, an even higher legacy amount that they can be much higher legacy by having the last bucket uh, of their portfolio in an aggressive portfolio okay and i take it this is all this is all web based everything is web based it's all running off uh, all in a browser and you simply you can sign up for it yourself just go to our sign up page and you can get going right away on using the tool we use google account for login so just you can log in and sell for just right now all web based and uh, how does it work for um, touch uh, it does work on iPad not optimized but on the Safari browser on iPad you can use the application by by touch although not optimized people advise us use it to run the plans okay it works